The following is a presentation of Rosenet TV, an internet TV channel for the borough of Madison, New Jersey. I thank you all for coming out on this rainy morning. Just remember that April showers do bring May flowers. And another reminder is that next week we won't be having a lecture, so please come back on April 17th to hear Gordon McInnes. He's the senior education policy expert at the Woodrow Wilson School of Public and International Affairs at Princeton University. That should be good. Interesting to us here in the education realm. Okay, and before I introduce our esteemed guest, Joe Malone, I have to explain that our other scheduled guest for this program, Assemblyman Alex DeCroche, sends his regrets. Unfortunately, he is attending the funeral of a colleague this morning. Joe Malone and I were speaking earlier, and I found out that he's got uh, deep roots here in New Jersey, four generations in the Bordentown area. He knows all the history. It's quite impressive. And for any of you students who aspire to politics as a career, you could follow his example by uh, realizing that you have to start at the local level. Joe Malone um, served on the Bordentown Sewerage Authority. He was deputy mayor. He was the direct, oh, he was mayor also, and director of public works. He's been in the General Assembly since 1993 and he's the Republican budget officer. He told me earlier he was gonna speak on the pithy issues regarding the educational elite. So I'm sure we all wanna know about the budget. Joe Malone um, was educated at Trenton State College, his BS and his master's in education. He's on the budget committee and the education committee, so this is interesting to us. So without further ado, let us welcome Joe Malone. Thank you very much uh, for having me today. Um, let me say this. Uh, uh, for those, how many of you are in political science in the room? Two or three of you? Look, uh, let me, let me, I'm gonna start off with a little lecture to the students before we get into, into uh, some serious issues. Um, I started in politics um, basically uh, when I was 23. I got elected to office in Bordentown. Uh, I have never made politics my means of making a living. I've enjoyed it immensely. I've done a lot of things. I've had a lot of opportunities. I've met a lot of great people. Um, but make sure, if you make that decision to go into politics, especially at an early age, and you make it your sole means of a living, um, You'll have to do things that you don't want to do. And you're going to have to give up, in many cases, who you are and what some of your beliefs might be. Um, please do me a big favor and stay grounded in your real core principles. Um, no one in politics is worth giving up your, your core beliefs. Because as I said to one young man earlier today, I've only there are very few people I've met in politics that over the long haul I've been able to truly trust and would really put my hand, life in their hands. So just make sure, if you make that commitment, that you never forget who you are because you'll get run over, you'll get brutalized, and you'll get misused. And I've had young people that worked for me as a young lady who, uh, who uh, came to work with me about three years ago. She's gone on since to work in the assembly office and on, on a number of campaigns. And I have told her repeatedly, Kristen, make sure you never forget who you are and what you really believe in, because it gets lost. Um, with that, uh, yes, I have been in politics for 36 years. Uh, aside from that, I was a school teacher in New Brunswick for eight years. I left New Brunswick and went to Educational Testing Service, and I did not work on the dreaded college board tests. I worked on professional occupational exams uh, for eight years, went back into school administration at Somerset County Technology Institute, which was a two-year post-secondary uh, technical wing of Rowan Valley Community College. And I enjoyed that immensely. I retired from there three years ago. 
Uh, I drove past the school today to come up here and get on to 287. Um, uh, I have always been uh, one who has uh, looked at education as being a, a, a real tool for individuals uh, both going to college and going into uh, the technical workforce as being essential in anyone's life. I just think it's absolutely critical. Uh, for those young men and women in here, I, I, I am married. I have two sons. One's 24 and one's 28. And one went to Resinus and the other went to Gettysburg. So, And my wife almost went to Fairleigh Dickinson. Uh, another public announcement, I spent many, many uh, days uh, visiting my aunt uh, who lived on South Oak Court, which was right on the far end of your wall here, and uh, making our way through the green fence that used to be there to play in the fields. So I am familiar with Fairleigh Dickinson, and, and I am familiar with Madison, and uh, it's a great institution and a great place to live. And you got to be very, very proud of, of the education you get here and the things that go on in this school. Um, let me just start off by telling you from a political standpoint and from an assembly standpoint, uh, I want to apologize for what government has done to you. The last eight, ten years in the state of New Jersey, uh, we have done some terribly shameful things to the public. Uh, we have in many ways misspent your money. We have not been very truthful with you on how we've spent that money. We've mortgaged the future of young men and women sitting in this room. Uh, we've made a mess, both at the state level and at the national level. And um, I don't know how many more years I'll have in politics, but I just think that um, given the tremendous problems that we're having in the economy and the legacy that uh, is being left for our children, uh, maybe some can find it in their heart to tell the truth about how we got here, why we're here, and what we need to do to get out of this. Um, basically, uh, this budget isn't considerably different than the last seven or eight that I've had uh, the distinct privilege and actually 15 I've been involved with. Um, we have, um, as the governor affectionately said, uh, we've been kicking the can down the road every year just to get to a new election or get to the next year or to take care of some interest group. And I jokingly said to the governor, uh, your, the front of your shoe must be worn out because you're still kicking that can down the road. 